Hiya, yeah. welcome to another King's Daily and good to be with you. We are continuing our way through the book of Acts and currently in Acts chapter 15, focusing in on this pivotal moment in the, the, the life of the early church and the expansion of the good news of Jesus as it spreads and more and more people becoming Christ followers, maybe from not just Jewish background, but from a Gentile, non-Jew background. And churches are getting established like in Antioch, where Paul and Barnabas have played a significant role and they're strengthening those churches and, and helping them um, be established in different areas. And then back in Jerusalem, there's a, a debate that's going on about the, in one sense, the, the, the essence of the gospel, this good news about Jesus. And people from, some people from a Jewish background are saying that, hey, actually to be saved, to be made right with God, you don't just need to follow Jesus, you need to, to be saved, you need to get circumcised this representation of the old covenant and and um, the law of Moses and and you need to keep that and Jesus it's kind of a Jesus plus deal going on and so it says in verse 6 in chapter 15 that um, the apostles and the elders were gathered together to consider this matter they took time to really work through this issue it says they questioned they debated they reasoned from the scriptures Paul and Barnabas and some of his team had come back. They were sharing their stories about how the amazing grace of God had, had transformed and turned these non-Jewish life around, as well as the Jews. And God was forming these new communities of Jew and Gentile, breaking down the barriers that used to divide, doing something wonderful there. Peter recounts the story of Cornelius and, and so on. And then on um, in verse 11, they state this, that we believe we are saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus. That it's not through circumcision, it's not through the keeping of Old Testament law, but it's through the grace of the Lord Jesus. And they were to send this message out to the churches. And it says in Acts chapter 16, verse 5, the result of this gathering, this result of considering what the gospel is, um, the churches were strengthened in their faith and they increased in their numbers daily. The churches were strengthened in their faith and increased in numbers daily. So this continued focus on and reliance on and purity of the gospel about the extravagant grace of God in Jesus, that it's not Jesus plus, that Jesus is enough. He is the one who restores our relationship with God, that it's through him, that this strengthened their faith and increased people coming to follow Jesus. And it's the same for us. There's a beautiful strengthening that takes place when we get hold of and grasp and learn more of the grace of God. And it reminded me of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 9. It says this, Do not be carried away by varied and strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by foods. Um, what's he talking about there? Maybe the uh, dietary requirements and laws and things like that, maybe relying on these other things to, for the basis for our relationship with God and our standing before God. Um, he says, hey, don't be strengthened by these things that um, they've, they've, they have no benefit. Um, and, and even these Old Testament food laws, they were pointing forward ultimately to, to Christ and him the fulfillment of all of these things. So don't be strengthened by these things, but be strengthened by grace. And he says, it's good for the heart to be strengthened by grace. It's the, one person put it this way, it's the thinking, this is what the heart is, the thinking, feeling, willing, hoping, fearing, trusting, longing, raging, grieving, rejoicing you. It's the, where we live out from, and he's saying it's good for the heart to be strong. Paul puts it, I think, was it, the, 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 you know, the outer man's fading away, and we may be physically weak, but actually the inner man is being renewed, the person being day by day, the heart to be strong and to be healthy. And it's good to be strengthened by grace, not by religious regulations and rule keeping and law keeping, thinking these are the things that are the, are the basis for my relationship with God. So rather than feed on other things, feed on grace every day, have a breakfast of grace every day. And we do that. Um, 
as many of you I'm sure will know, we do that by feeding on God's word. We keep feeding on Jesus. We keep feeding on the grace of God. We keep reading the stories of Jesus, the gospels. We keep being amazed and gobsmacked at who Jesus is and his incredible kindness and patience and compassion and love and his mercy and his forgiveness. 2 Peter 3.18 says, Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And when I read a verse like that, it makes me ask the question, am I growing in the grace and the knowledge of who Jesus is and what he's done? So keep feeding on God's word, keep praying, keep approaching the throne of grace with confidence to find help and mercy and grace in our time of need. I love it that God's grace is woven in to the um, Lord's Prayer, the way that Jesus said, hey, you want to learn how to pray? This is how you pray. And he weaves God's grace into that, where he says, you know, Father, forgive us our failures. This is a daily prayer. Lord, every day I'm relying on your grace. I'm not going to get back to self-reliance. And that's another way of feeding on the grace of God, if you like, is ban self-reliance in your life. Um, We do not build our relationship with God as a Christian on the basis of our adequacy. Um, it's not based on, on the basis of my capacity to be adequate before God or to be sufficient before God in the way I live my life, but rather it's based on what Jesus has done and solely on what he has done. And it's that grace that teaches us, that transforms us, that changes us, that ena- um, enables us to say no to ungodliness and live a self-controlled and upright life. And Titus 2.11. Um, so yeah, ban self-reliance prayer, feed on the Gospels, um, get some good tour guides maybe as well if you're, it doesn't matter whether you're new to the Bible or old to the Bible, when we read the Gospels, just having others alongside us, um, pointing things out, I always say a good book is like a good tour guide, They're able to sometimes bring a, another angle on something maybe we've read before, it's like walking through where I live in Norwich and I may not know the history of a building but if someone pointed that out it might enrich my walk. Um, through the city if someone says oh but have you seen that and did you know the story behind that and a good tour guide is like that and for me there are some uh, good tour guides I've mentioned before but mention them again the ragamuffin gospel I love a bit of that in terms of um, just grasping the grace of God Christ Our Life by Michael Reeves outstanding book on who Jesus is and what he's done he's a brilliant tour guide and one I'm just reading through at the minute um, by Dane Ortland gentle and lowly um, just a brilliant book it says the heart of Christ for sinners and sufferers you ever suffered you ever blowing it sinned do you want to know the grace of God do you want to know what God's heart is towards you uh, Dane Orland unpacks that wonderfully in this book as well so they're good tour guides if you want to grow in the knowledge of who Jesus is and grow in the grace of God I don't know if you've seen the film The Hobbit and um, in The Unexpected Journey, I think it's the first film, and the king of dwarves there, he is, um, he's got what's called um, a sickness of the heart because of this gold, this mountain of gold that they go back to and where they used to live and so on, and this king just sitting on piles and piles of jewels and gold and treasures and so on, and it just says the king's heart had become sick because of his obsession with this treasure. Well, in the same way, rather than our heart, well, not in the same way, but in a, rather than our hearts becoming sick, our hearts can be strengthened through an obsession with the treasure that there is in the grace of God in the person of Jesus. And my prayer today is exactly that, that we'd feed on his grace and that we'd be strengthened in our hearts to walk through this season in Jesus' name. Amen. Good to be with you. Take care. Bye.